Yo, what's up goblings and throblings? Welcome back to the channel. My name is James. Make sure you join our graphic design discord channel if you want to share work, get feedback, win giveaways, all of that kind of stuff. Just talk to other fellow designers. Go join the discord. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. I'll be trying to make content as regularly as I can. It's all graphic design related stuff. Mostly, I just said all and mostly in one sentence. Um, anyway, what you're watching today is I found this Chance the Rapper kind of iconography uh, on a thumbnail of a video. It was a Chance type beat. I was like, you know what? That's a really nice bit of artwork. I'm going to take the style, the same brush strokes, the same kind of shading, but instead teach you guys how to recreate it. You could do this for anyone. You could do this for yourself just using a selfie or you could pick a rapper like I've done and do it for them. Uh, it will work for anyone really. If they have some noticeable features like colorful hair or face tattoos or you know dominant facial features, that really helps. For example, with this chance, the rapper one, the hat on top looks really cool. Uh, also the color going down the side of the face just adds a bit of, um, you know, extra, an extra artistic touch. Um, but yeah, you're watching a speed art right now of me doing the chance, the rapper artwork, but using Lil peep instead um, as soon as that's done I'm gonna begin teaching you a few little tips and tricks that you might be confused on such as using the exact same brush width throughout uh, maybe you want to know the best way of getting smooth lines so yeah the speed art has ended this is the final piece now let me teach you a few tips and tricks that might have been hard for you to get from watching the speed art so that you can go away and create one of these yourself okay guys so first thing that you're going to want to do is press create new and open up with your document i'm going to choose 1920 by 1080 so that i keep it the size of my monitor then i'm going to choose my canvas tool up here the crop tool sorry not canvas tool and i'm going to hold shift and alt and i'm just going to make it a bit larger so that it remains the same resolution but is a high quality I'm then going to select the mouse and then press crop. Right, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go and find the face of the person you're going to be doing the artwork for. I'm gonna go for this picture here. I've literally just pasted it in using control V. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and I'm gonna drop the opacity. I put it on 22% opacity, put it on whatever you like. You want it to be light enough that it doesn't really distract you, but enough so that you can see it as a guide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the graphics from Chance the Rapper as a reference so that we can copy the same brush size. So I've taken a screenshot and I've copy and pasted it. I'm going to select just the part where his face is, delete the rest, and now I'm going to make it the same size as ours so that we can use the same size stroke. So now what we can do is we can select B, which will bring our brush up, and we can synchronize our brush with the same size as theirs. So I'm gonna keep pressing the bracket down until it gets to the same size as theirs. So that is about right. You can see that that's what they use for all of their strokes, even around the nose. Um, some of them look a little bit smaller. It makes sense why they've done that. These outline ones are slightly thicker. You may have noticed with my Lil Peep one that I made the hair smaller. Um, it just helps with the features, you know, it makes the whole image bold, but it allows you to get a little bit more into the face. So we're going to be using this size here for the outside and then we're going to go a bit smaller on the inside. Before going over and doing the final lines, I recommend doing a quick sketch over the top just so that you get an idea for where you're going to be doing the lines. So I think there's a couple things we need to capture on Kim Young Un's face. One of which is going to be the double chin. I'm very sorry, please don't nuke me. I'm now just going to go around his face. I'm making it quite simple so like where the ear is instead of doing all of the shapes I'm just doing like that for example you know instead of going like that I'm really getting an ear shape because this is a cartoon illustration you're allowed to take shortcuts it's going to make the piece look better overall uh, the other thing obviously his quiff the way it comes out in both directions so what we'll do is we'll get that I think that's quite cool so what we'll do is we'll get this bit and then we'll come back around here like that and then a little bit of a line there and the same on this side so now that this is done I'm zooming into the face and I'm gonna capture these features here so we're gonna go for closed eyes 
it makes him look a bit sad. Um, I'm just following where his eyebrows are. His nose is actually weirdly like my nose. That's quite worrying. Now we're going to get his little, um, he's got quite a frowny mouth. So we're going to try and capture that. That doesn't look very good. So I'm going to select the eraser and get rid of that and start again. It's really hard to do when you're using a thick stroke, but it's good to do this sketch with a thick stroke because if you do it with a small stroke, realistically, you're going to be back where you started when it comes to doing the thick lines as you're not going to have a, a realistic guide for what you need to do. So I would say this is looking pretty good. <laughs> um, the next thing you can do is get the circle going. So you select the circle tool. Let's make the circle the same size as the Chance the Rapper circle. So I'm going to create it, then I'm going to position it, and then I'm just going to resize it until it fits perfectly within his. Now that we've got that, we'll go like this. What we're going to do is press blending options. So right click on the circle, blending options. We're going to make the color overlay white and we're going to add a stroke, which is going to be black. And we're going to make the stroke pretty thin. Something like that is good. And then we're just going to put that behind the image just like that. I'm going to rasterize it as well. And then we're going to choose where we want it just so we have a reference. I reckon about there. Then what we can do is we can actually rub out everywhere that it doesn't need to be like that. And we can rub out the Kim Jong Un layer here on the outsides. And this is what we're left with. So now we're ready to go over it with the thick brush. So let's get our sizes right. There we go. I'm going to lower the opacity of this and we're going to get to work. So what we do here is we use the pen tool. This means that we're going to get a fixed width stroke. So it looks like this. We go around and we just follow what we've drawn. Feel free to make some adjustments at this stage if you feel like you can do it better than how you've um, previously marked it out. Stroke path, okay. And then when you're done, you right click, stroke path and press okay. You then right click again and delete the path and then start back up again. All right, so now we're gonna carry on. You might find that when the strokes are this large that the image isn't actually looking the way you were hoping it would look. So feel free to keep like making adjustments. Uh, as you're doing this, you can go around and use the pen tool to change things if you're like, oh, actually, let's move this in a bit. You can do all that afterwards so you don't have to just rely on the first attempt. If you struggle with the pen tool, I'll have my pen tool tutorial up on screen. You can find it just by looking through my channel or if I remember, I'll put it in my description. I've actually got a pen tool game, so it's a quite a fun way of learning how to use the pen tool. And it's one of the most useful features within Photoshop when you know how to use it. So there we go, we have his crazy hair. Uh, I'm gonna go a few strokes down here to get these inside bits. That just kind of adds that flow, adds the dynamic into his hair to remind you that it's actually hair and there's lines in it and all that. Um, and now we're gonna stay at this slightly smaller stroke width for the inside features such as his eyebrows and his eyes and his nose and all of that. So let's get that done now. Let's get the double chin going. I'm just going to use the eraser to get rid of these bits that kind of stick out very slightly. And now that we've got that done, I'm going to move on to teaching you how to do the color. So for this, you're going to want to use your reference image so that you can take um, the color accurately. 
I'm going to put that up there and I'm going to turn the opacity up. I'm going to select just his face so that we don't have all the overlap. Uh, and I'm going to press B to get the brush and then I'm going to hold Alt which allows us to use this color picker and we can literally just steal the color from his face. So I'm going to choose up here where it's not blotchy. If you choose somewhere where there's lots of colors then you might get slightly the wrong color. But like up here on his forehead it's quite smooth so we can just get that color. And now as you can see, there you go. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to select the drawing layer and make it disappear. Just make it a bit cleaner. I'm then going to merge this and the background circle together by clicking both of them then pressing merge. I'm now going to select using pressing W, it's going to select the wand and then I'm going to press inside the face with left click. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto the layer underneath this one, make a new layer Go to select, modify, expand, and expand by four. That just moves the selection slightly into the line because if you don't do that, then you're going to see where the color meets the line, and it's going to be um, there's going to be a gap between the color and the line. Now, because we're on the layer underneath, it's going to very smoothly apply the color. Just like that, we're going to select a pinkish color for his lips and stay on this layer underneath and just draw it in. His hair up top is very dark, it's almost black, so we're going to do that a bit. For some reason, I'm not quite sure what I did to make this happen, but you can see that there's certain white bits that are kind of showing through. Little mistakes like this always happen in Photoshop. This is going to be pretty easy for me to fix. I'm just going to click where the white appears so that it takes me to the layer that it's on. I'm going to press W and I'm going to hold Shift and I'm going to select all the white bits. I'm then going to go select, modify, expand by just one and I'm going to press delete. That means it deletes it and the little expanded bit means it deletes a tiny bit more than I'm asking it to just so that we don't leave any accidental white parts. Now what I'm going to do is teach you how to do the shading. So to do this, as you can see with Chance the Rapper, we have this skin color and then we have the slightly darker skin color. And then over here where the blue bit is, we have this blue skin and then the slightly lighter blue skin. Um, we could do we could do half of his face in color like the Chance the Rapper one but I think the reason that works is because it follows this line where his nose is. We don't really have anything like that that goes all the way up so we're just going to stick to his normal skin color but what we're going to do is we're going to use black as the shadow. Click on the layer with his skin, go to the layer above that one, right click on it create a clipping mask. What that means is as we're drawing it only draws on the skin and nothing else now we're going to select where we want the shadow to be so realistically the shadow would be around here because his hair would be causing a shadow on his face um, you have to assume you have to decide which direction the sun's coming from so i'm going to choose from the top right meaning the shadows are going to be on the left and on the towards the bottom so here coming all the way down and slightly down onto his face like that his chin i mean not his face and then I'm just going around here and meeting back at the starting point so that I can right click, make a selection and fill it all in. Just like that. Now what we do to make it a shadow is we lower the opacity until it's at the right amount. So I would say something around there is probably good. Uh, if you're unhappy with the color, which I currently am, what we can do is we can change it. Now if you're not just going to use black, which I've decided I'm not going to do in this case because I don't think the shadow looks good enough. Instead of lowering the opacity, keep it at 100%. Go to blending options, choose color overlay, select the color of his face, and then just choose the shadow color yourself by looking around like this. If you want to remind yourself the color of his face, just keep clicking on the face and then going back to the color palette. I would say something like that looks pretty good. Uh, I think this bit in here would make sense if this was all in shadow like this however I'm going to rub out where the lips are because we want to keep that the same color and then I'm going to add a shadow just around here 
just to create the effect of the double chin. Very important. There we go. <laughs> this is probably the strangest bit of artwork I've ever done. Uh, now we're going to do... Actually, I take that back. It's definitely not. Now we're going to add the light part. So we're going to select the color white. We're going to make a new layer and turn it into a clipping mask again. And then select the opposite side of his face to start doing the lighting. To look like this. You can try a few layer modes. Often overlay works as a shadow. Um, or just lower the opacity until it just adds that slight shadow effect. Maybe we could have this on his eyelids like that. So there we go, there's Kim Jong Un. Um, I'm gonna actually add a few, like, I'm actually going to add a few bits of light reflection to his hair, just to bring his hair to life. So I'm going to make a layer above the hair, create a clipping mask, and then select where I want the lighting to be. I think at the top like that. And the same on the other side like that. And then lower the opacity. And I'm going to do the same thing to his jacket just for consistency. Now the last thing to do is this background effect. So what we want to do is select a color, the one on the Chance the Rapper one. It's not a fully vibrant color, but it's somewhere around here. Um, maybe we'll go like bright yellow. And we wanna select these bits here. We wanna go down underneath it. We wanna go select, modify, expand. One will do, and we're going to paste it in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the lesser saturated color from the background. However, we're going to scroll it back down to yellow for consistency sake. And that is then going to become our background like that. Now, these two colors look a lot more similar than these two colors. So we're going to do a bit of fiddling around. I'm going to take the saturation down slightly. I'm going to slightly change the yellow. I'm going to lighten it up very slightly, something like this. And then if you want to modify that, you can do, you can just use the hue and saturation to change it, find a color that you like. If you decide you like that color, then all you have to do is then change that inside bit. But I think yellow works pretty well for this. Once you're done, you can literally select all layers, merge them together, grab your marquee tool, select a square, copy, and paste and bang, you have your finished piece. Obviously save it as a PSD before you merge everything together. Um, because right now, if I wanted to now go and edit this, I can't, so I'd have to go back a few stages. Um, yeah guys, that's the end of the tutorial. Hope this video was of use. Hope you had fun following this art style. I think it's a really cool art style. I will continue to break down art styles. Uh, I'm always doing stuff like this. I teach you how to make logos like other people, banners like other people. Um, obviously, I have my own unique ideas. I have a clothing brand where I just come up with random ideas and put them on t-shirts. I do all kinds of stuff, so make sure you follow me on other platforms. Um, but this kind of tutorial style is the nature of my channel. So if you like it, you're trying to learn Photoshop, you're trying to get more into graphic design, um, definitely subscribe. And I hope to see you in one of my future video guys. That's it from me. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. And peace. I go black, I go white, I go purple, I go green. I got bitches on my screen. They too funny, Mr. Bean. Tell me that I won't make it. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? I said, whoa.